Can't, I wish it was karma. At least then I could have had a good time of doing something bad. And my thing fucking crashed it anyway beforehand, but I've changed it to, instead of OpenGL, I've changed it to the other one, the Direct X9, to see if that'll do any better. But anyway, let's get on. And we're going to space. We're doing the space route first, because the Earth route will be the canon one. So, at the flag base, here's Patrick. And he's hanging out with Daryl and Graham. Um, and... Dreadrock and... D -d -d um, he's... Yeah, like, he's like, wait, you the, that guy? Wait, that guy? What? What? That dude? Uh, Takla Makan? Yeah, he's like, Tak... Uh, yeah, he's like, wait, Takla Makan? You're the Takla Makan guy? Well, you remember me from Takla Makan? And uh, he says that um, Patrick remembers, uh, like, mostly remembers Daryl's dread, uh, dreadlocks, his dreads from uh, when they did, uh, they, when they worked in Taklamakan. Uh, but all Daryl knows about Patrick is that he was the first to, uh, yeah, cool, sir. That's right. He's like, weren't you the first one to get his butt kicked by a Gundam? He's like, do what you say to me. I'm the ace, buddy. But Patrick uh, really wants to meet the Britannia Union's ace. And, uh, but Daryl tells him that, uh, Graham isn't, uh, in this thing. And Patrick's like, well, I uh, understand if, uh, their top, uh, ace, uh, doesn't want to risk himself in such a dangerous operation. What with the beastmen and the aliens in the Imperium. And Daryl is like, you just call him a fucking coward, dude. But, Patrick, call us, uh, this mysterious fellow. Jeremy got all his back, and he also doesn't like Patrick very much. And um, he says, uh, "What are you wearing, so orange?" And Jeremy says, "I'm positively, emphatically, not, not, not orange." And Suzuku tells him to Sir Jeremy to shut up. He's like, "All right, yes, all right, fine, yes." And Daryl says, look, Jeremy Gottwald, looks like a lot has happened to him. And not just with all them cyborg implants. But Daryl feels like Suzuku's the one who's really changed uh, since uh, Taklama Khan. And then Lloyd, with his big smirk, says, it's like he's been owned until he's razor sharp. Honed, that is. Until he's razor sharp. And uh, he says, as for Jeremy, those impl implants saved his life when he would have been killed in battle. But he still needs some fine tuning, don't worry about it, it's fine though. The important thing is that they both volunteered for this. Uh, Lloyd doesn't tell, uh... Yeah, there he says that they volunteered, but he doesn't tell Daryl, uh... That he's sure that it's because Schneisel told Jeremy the real reason for forming this army. And Suzuku lost his direction when he lost Euphemia, so he, like, signed up. And it's like, oh yeah, Euphemia, the Princess of Slaughter! Calls Patrick. And Daryl says that's been disrespectful. And then Lloyd says, hey, no uh, disrespecting the status here, because uh, her royalty was stripped. She's just a regular old asshole who murdered everybody. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he has been. Patrick's been owned until he was razor sharp. Uh, Zex uh, won't hear the name of a dead woman smeared, however, though, because he's a good boy, even if she isn't a princess. Uh, Patrick introduces himself to Zex and throws down a challenge. And Zex doesn't care. And he says, uh, the title of the Ace of the AU like, may well soon be obsolete. And Katie Mannequin comes over, uh, the the colonel lady, the general lady, and uh, she thinks the same. He's very disappointed in Patrick. He needs to pay more attention to the world stage as a whole. He says, Colonel, then teach me privately after this operation is complete. In your quarters, if possible. And Katie says, Second Lieutenant, the world is on the cusp of huge sweeping revolution. Are you not thinking about that at all? Absolutely not! <laughs> Katie's st stunned by this man. But, uh, she'll keep, like, she'll keep an eye on him, but not in the way he hoped, and uh, she assigns him to deliver a report on the Imperium's effect on global politics, due before mission briefing. And, uh, he said, and, um... And Patrick is like, yep, sure thing! 
I will do the report. And he's like, you do need a private lesson before the operation be begins. And he's like, hell yeah, teach me, mummy. And she finds him exhausting. But yeah, and he apparently hasn't changed a bit. But Sergei's glad that Patrick hasn't changed. It's the younger generation will lead the world in the coming era. And Soma uh, asks if they really can win. And Sergei he says, well, they're gathered here to win. So, yeah, sure. Uh, but Zex internally wonders, uh, to win against what? And Katie wonders if the UNF is the thing that will win against the Imperium. So, Crow's given his report that Zexis are splitting up again, and this time they decided themselves. They just don't trust Elgin Roddick's orders anymore, so they're going to do uh, make it a show on their own. The invaders have quieted down since the Sao Tome lab attack, and our two angles of attack are the Beastmen on the Dark Continent and the Gishin base out in space. Uh, the space team also passed through Dragon's Hive, where Fox Sweeper has something uh, to tell us about those white robots that keep coming from the moon. And uh, we'll deal with them on the way to the Gishin, and, you know, visit the moon. Uh, but that mostly just shows how much stuff is wrapped in complete mystery, even without Elgin. Like, Fog Sweeper doesn't tell us much, and there's the, but the Beastmen and the Gishin themselves, like, why do they want to destroy slash conquer humanity? I don't know what they're after, but Crow doesn't care. they got to be dealt with, and soon. And we have the Puppet Master and the Imperium to get back to, and uh, either of them could break the world in half uh, quite thoroughly on their own. So they talk about the split and who's going to be on what side, but we're going to space. And here's Crow, he says, and as always, I get to pick my own route. Yes, yes, they spoil you. They respect my freedom of choice. Well, you don't owe Zexis any money. Yeah, 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 mind me, why don't you? So, which way are you going? Hmm. And we're going to space. Oochoo. Oochoo. I'm going to look up the secret. It's going to get crunchy for a second while it loads the thing. Uh, we did the secret. We did the secret. That's fine. Did that. Okay, so... It doesn't matter if we do the Marguerite secret, but we'll do it anyway. But we're going to space. Well, Shin Dragon sort of blew up and we got them all, but yeah, we did that last time. But, Crow says there's a lot in space to be worried about. There's the moon creatures, the Gishin, and the Vajra. Uh, we can't deal with the Imperium while that's all over our head. It, do it does have a lot of root splits. Like the, um, like the start, you do two stages, and then it's a choice of two root splits, and then each one of those then has a choice of two, but one of them is the same. Like, you go, okay, you go to Japan, and then you stay Japan, or go after Celestial Being, or you go after Celestial Being, and then stay Celestial Being, or go after the Colony Gundams. And then there's a stage that is four, like, it's one stage, but four different variants of it, depending on whether you went Japan, 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 Celestial Being, um, Celestial Being, Celestial Being, Celestial Being, Colony Gundam. And it's just fucking ridiculous. And then that then splits off after that into the two routes. And then there's another two. And then there's another three. And then there's another three. And then there's another two. But there's loads of routes splits now. They're all in like three stages e like long each time. But it's all hanging over our heads. And we're doing it. And i got to look up this. Yeah. And uh, Crow submitted a report on his uh, sphere, on yeah, on his sphere, and try to think so that she can use the data to dig deeper into the secrets of the VX. And uh, Crow said, "Find out how that fucking idiot, that ugly naked man, got his hands on it too." Full drum, <laughs> drum roll um, for the for the debt. And he's like, "That was me." He's like, "How did you fit a full?" drum kit in the the office he's like does it bother you what tell me if it bothers you I'm just some clown right bangs out the drum solo he's like hey 
Cool it. You don't have to beat out your feelings with the drums. I'm grateful, all right? I appreciate all your performance from the bottom of my heart. Really? I'll put on an even better one next time. Just don't do anything crazy. And then tries like, all right, let's see the numbers. Drum roll and gong. Ka ching Well, you earned 400,000 G, so that leaves you 1.1 million G in the red. Alright, almost halfway. Definitely worth fighting all those crazy bastards. Good job, Crow, says Esther. Hey, I owe it to the great support from you two. You definitely earned it. Keep it up. The world turned itself upside down wouldn't stop me. That's what I like about you, Crow. Thanks, Esther. I'm glad I've got a beauty and a cutie at my back. Yeah? What's the matter? D did you just call me a, a cutie? He's like, oh, sh oh no, that was the, whoops, that was the wrong thing to say. Poor crow, he fucked it. He's fucked it. I'm not pulling everybody in half. Don't worry. About Seriously, <laughs> yeah, drums on the gong. That lady loves the drums on the gong. Okay, and I'm gonna save, but obviously in the different slot. Oh no, I'll save. I'll save there in this slot. And then, whatever, I don't fucking care. Uh, and then I will load the previous one before the root split and make a save state. There we go. Now we go back. Looking, they're looking pretty good. We don't have any items that people would like. Oh, actually, I don't think there's anybody who sucks at space. Let's see if anybody sucks at space. No, everybody is A at space, so that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But, alright. Right, then. Poor crow. He said he's got a cutie and a beauty. Cutie and a beauty. Yeah. 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 Just fucking meow. So here we get to Dragon's Hive. Team D and the Cyber Beast Force are here. And they're like, Tanaka, we don't want to talk to you. We're going to talk to Fox Sweeper. And they want to know about those creatures from the moon. And uh, why well, uh, Foxy once said that their enemies, Dan Cougar, exists to fight. And Foxy as fucking Sarah. And Foxy just says, not telling you. So Kura pulls a gun out and points it at his head. And the Cyber Beast Force, the regular Dan Cougar, are like, uh, yo, back off. You're never going to crack him that way. And uh... Rio uh, can tell that Tanaka will get to her faster than she can pull the trigger, and Tanaka's like, "Oh, just, uh, just my job as team manager, you know. I'm not, oh, I'm not amazing or anything." And it's like, actually, he fucking is. Uh, Johnny asks if he can at least tell them about the R die gun, and Foxy just says, "You'll find out eventually." And not too, uh, yeah, not too long uh, from now at that, and he says, uh, "That moment will mark the beginning of a great trial for this planet." And then, end scene. So, Foxy uh, made it clear he's not going to tell us anything, whether we point guns at him or beg, so, you know. If you want to know, we just have to wait for the time he vaguely hinted at. The beginning of the Great Trial. Shinobi's not worried for the planet, though. He's like, this rock's already in the middle of a hell of a trial. And now he definitely agrees on with that. And, uh... She says, honestly, what's left for us to be scared of? Yeah. <laughs> Senpai, like she just fucking spells out Senpai, that's really weird to me. 
Johnny is still determined to find out the truth about the Ars Igon, even though everybody fucking knows it's Ada. Um, and if uh, Fog Super won't tell him, he'll just ask Ada himself the next time they meet. And Ru 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 and she's like, no, it's it's Ru 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 it's very easy, and now he's just like Rudy Rudy, whatever, I don't care, Rolly Rolly, Polly, let's go. But she says she's gonna look into it as well. And then, uh, Lauren and Harry also have something to ask uh, Ru and Samey. Uh, Samey is the the mechanic. And, uh, there she is. And, uh, whatever information they can get out of Dragon's Hive, uh, Dragon's Hive on an individual, a woman, someone important in Zooth. And they're very much to them personally. It's their world's uh, Queen of the Moon, Diana Soleil. And uh, they believe she might have been warped to this universe at the same time they were. And then Kira's like, oh, hey, while we're doing that, can you like look up uh, Lakers Klein? And he's like, oh, was she your lover, Kira? And he just says, she's close to me. And it's like, well, he's Jesus, so he never fucked anybody, I guess. He's too pure. And same me asked Zeus to put together a list of all the people they want us to look for. Uh, so the grand, it's like, so the grand knights. You got anyone? It's like, nah, don't worry about Sam, man. He's got it. He'll be fine. And uh, the elements like and Fudo again. I mean, getting Fudo, he can just do whatever the fuck he wants. Who cares? Wherever they are, they're taking care of themselves. So don't worry about it. And any member of Zuthu who hasn't been found after all this time probably didn't come over at all. So for now, they focus on what they have to do: beat up this universe's bad guys. And then, thus alarm, and it's uh, Gishin Strike Squad, so let's get going everybody. I think this is a good stage, actually. Chapter 42 of the Space Route to Space, together. So, we definitely want to bring that boy. And Aoi's first out of the hatch, and she uh, says she's always uh, too curious about Dragon's Hive to let it get wrecked. Here's Takaru. He's Marin. No time to be depressed, Takaru. Marin, do you think I can put aside my hatred while I fight? Takaru. I promised my mother I'd fight for peace. But if I see Rose's face, I think I'll lose myself in hatred. There's only one thing I can tell you. If we can't put aside our hatred and sorrow, we as a world have no future. Marin. I learned that in my own bitter battles. I don't want you to make the same mistake. Thank you, Marin. I'll, I'll try. But if I do get consumed by my own hatred, then... Then I'll exile myself from this planet, since I won't have the right to defend it. Fine, but don't jump the gun on that. And then Toshia in God Sigma. He's right. If that happens, we'll be here to pull you back. Then Kiriken. Yeah, even you have to do it by force. And then Julie. Alright, that's enough. Here they come. Hey, that's enough. That's enough briefing. And here's Rose in charge of the squadron, and she's like, "I will get revenge on you, Mar for Marg." And everywhere else is like, "But you fucking got him killed. So shut the fuck up, lady. It's denial. You want to hang out with Mars and smooch him? Shut up. Let's go. It's denial. Let's get him. And we got five turns to meet the nerds. Element system active already." And these guys are ready to fucking go too with aggressive beast. Uh, these guys are not quite. But I don't believe they're secrets. I believe there are no secrets. Yeah, the only secret is Marguerite thing on stage 43. And because we're not keeping this route, we don't have to do that anyway. It's fine. But let's get in it, shall we? Look 
は任せるわそれじゃお言葉に甘えて And it isn't hard for Fox Eeper to tell them the deal, but he doesn't do these things because they are easy. He does them because they are hard. And it's way harder to be that mysterious for so long when people are pointing guns at you. You get a voice of my own? No, they're just on the other route. They aren't coming with us to space. They're good, they're fine, don't worry about it. Get the Garuda. Uh, I can read, like, this says simulator, and that says system. I can read um, that alphabet. Connect. Connect. Um, and I can read some um, kanji, but not very many. But I uh, like I mostly get by on them mostly just speaking in stock anime phrases and a lot of what they say just being English words written in code in their alphabet. But I have um, multiple guides and translations over. I like open over here, ready to go. <laughs> Is that the best you got? Now she has gone, who takes her place? Nobody. Nobody takes her place. She's dead. You can't replace people like that. Just double sword this plane, because I'm pretty sure you can kill the plane. That's 16 energy If his other moves cost more than 16 energy or less than 16 energy, we would also get the kill then. It's more efficient to just do the bigger move. Or he, no, it's fine, he just kills them with that anyway. It's fine. Love that Tetsuna. Okay, so it is. Yeah, no, okay, so it's more efficient to do that, because that's double but not double good. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the quick answer. Background knows it's a bit of both. Yeah, I think you summed it up. Let's go, Rio. How you doing? Background is walking, but it's going down anyway. So she's down there. Yo! Yo, fucking ripped. <laughs> Curse you! He's like, alright, I've got this, I've got this little one, it's got a scarf on. I mean, it's not as good 
as all the others. Like, it's not as strong as the strongest one. It's not as fast as the fastest one. It doesn't really have a niche, except it can turn off, like, all solar reactor Gundams, like it's the kill switch on them, I guess. But I'll disguise it as this other one, the fat boy one, that then does things and is good. And I want to focus against these guys because they're psychic. So they are good at attacking me. Show you a mobile soldier. Hi, how are you doing? How are you everybody doing? Are you banning that, buddy? Bunker break that guy. Oh, yes, you fly over here. Pulse over this plane. Not the ringing. You gotta be closer to do a drinking. Saber. Again, this time we'll kill some space beam that guy. Let's go, Raita. Remember when Raita on the So space beam, man. Remember when they were really racist to Marin because he was from space? Even though he was a really good boy all the time. How dare you! And Baldios isn't blocked by that dude being there because he teleports, so he ignores terrain and anything in the way. He's good. He's good. Let's get this boy in. I forgot, they've all got Transams now! They've all got Transams now! I may be a terrorist, but... Curse you! Does he have Transam now? He does have Transam! I think his Transam is, like, the most boring shitty one. Like, he just sits there goes pink and then fires a big bullet. SR point, uh, finish the stage within five turns. Yeah, defeat all enemies including reinforcements within five turns. Yeah, how hard it is to hit a plane with a ball on a chain. And he still couldn't fucking kill him. Quattro, what are you doing, mate? You needed your follow up to do that? You're meant to be the super strong boy. Got a pretty strong boy, at least. He was the first dude I attacked with that wasn't large or bigger. Naive. Yeah, and then he'll... 
I'll show you got them. Yeah, we probably won't. Poor guy. He's like, I'm psychic, I've got green eyes. I got all these blammo moves I can do. And it's like, yeah, but Quattro's got sunglasses though, so your move worthless. And these guys are ultra busted. Can't be able to you bad guys. I see Shark, how are you doing? It's from Voyager's Land. Invincible, really. The one movie he doesn't need. Go on, that was a little punch. Good guy, alright, Foxy Poo just went, I'm not gonna tell you anything. You'll find out soon enough, and everybody was like, It's not soon enough though, because we were annoyed. Anyway, I don't care. Be annoyed. Even if you pull a gun on me. Get needle. No, no secrets. There's one secret next stage, but we don't have to do it because we're not keeping this route, but we'll do it anyway. Yeah, and Julie just learned Fury, which again. Not the furious one, which is why that translation isn't a brilliant one. Even they got tomahawk. Why are you talking about? Alien Mecca, what do you do? Camille gonna use the Vulcans for their actual intended purpose. We'll oh, just jump up and get him with the sword. I was hoping that he wouldn't. That's fine too. Well, the Getter Tomahawk is a Tomahawk from the Getter, and his Tomahawk is the God Tomahawk. His Tomahawk from God is holy as hell. Don't mess with it. I oh, get he's giving him the old suck and blow. Look at that. Oh, I hate it. Even all these dudes, they're real racist. And this boy's got his Trans Am too. You do need to watch more for one night because he's good as hell. He's good as hell. Uh, fall 2017 is when the next season of Metal Gear comes out. 
if you mean the the thing that uh, Camille just did, where he supports himself, that's uh, double attack. And there's a skill called counter, where it, sometimes you get to go first, if you otherwise wouldn't. And Yuki 7 AO is getting a extra final episode in a Pachinko machine. Runa on the fucking drills, like, see, I told you drills were the best. Drills are amazing. Like I always say, drills can do anything. To watch Gravion, hope it's better than Nankugan Over. It's got Sandman in it, so it's better than Nankugan Over on that. But mostly, it's like, it's alright. It's not incredible or anything. And here's Amaro. No, uh, in this game, you need the support attack skill, and you need to be standing next to them. And for support defense, they need the support defense skill to stand next to them. They also need to be able to reach you on your terrain. So if you are on the ground and cannot fly, you cannot support someone who is up in the air. But if you can fly, then you can do it. You can help them out. Heavy beam can Love heavy beams. And the amount of times you could um, support is limited by your level of the skill up to level 4. Z2 is way faster than MX Equivalent Knight. MX is a very slow game, and then MX Portable is even slower. I don't remember Gravion doing any cliffhangers getting resolved in flashback of the next to the start episode. I'm also just going to be Sandman and the awful maids. Oh, he's had some hard time with Gravion. I mean, Gravion's got Sandman, so he's super majestic. He's the dreamiest boy of all. Oh, it happened! What? And now for his trans- Okay, I think his Trans Am isn't very impressive, and people complained, and that's why the man then redid it for the next game, and made it super good. Even though like everybody looks at Sam, man. You? And this is the end. For you. Yeah, so the dude then redid it, and it's the dude who does the, the new. And he became known as Mr. Kyrios, as Kyrios Sand, because he redid the animations for it because people complained. He's like, alright, I'll show you animation. This guy is not bad. This will be the end of you. Oh, 
だ。Barely not enough. Yeah, that boy was shooting with his arm gun. He's fine. He's good. He's got it. It's the dropping your weapons and go for the stab with the turn A isn't so bad because you can literally teleport its stuff to itself. It's fucked up. Turn A is gross. They wait. Like, they don't know how to do it. And they never do it in the show, but one of the properties of the turn A is it can teleport things to it. And there are loads of equipment bunkers all over the planet and in different storage places throughout space, or there were before everything got produced to just the Stone Age by nano machines, where he just holds out his hand and a gun teleports into its hand. Or it can bring a shield, or it can open up its. or teleport like. A nuclear missile barrage launching thingy into its chest. Don't give a shit about anything. And as long as a single cell is alive, it can regenerate itself and the pilot from just that. It's fucked. It's basically magic. I hate it personally. I'm glad that the people who live in space made the thing and they were just like, this button here. Destroys everything. Everything from Earth to Jupiter that isn't organic. But, Mr. Spaceman, you live in an inorganic tube in space. If we activate this, you'll die. Yes. Only use it if things get really bad. And things got really bad. Alright, so Bullios versus this jokester. What are you fighting for? What kind of life is it to just do what Zul commands? What would a mere Earthling know? I am not from Earth. W w what? I'm from a planet called S1, in an entirely different universe from this one. Then why are you fighting to defend this planet? I'm not fighting for this planet, I'm fighting because I believe it's the right thing to do. The right? If you truly believe with all your heart that Zul is right, I won't argue. If you don't, then stop. Silence. I, I. The, no, the turn A is not organic, but it is the thing that launched all the nano machines, so it didn't destroy itself. Everything the nano machines got at destroyed. And that's why there's only the people who are then asleep on the moon underground. And everything on Earth is Victorian ages now. It all got fucked up. Yeah, it became a beautiful butterfly. Okay, so we hit that lady. And Fox Super and Tanaka are watching, and Fox Super says a, um, a battle between humans born on different worlds. A battle born of hatred is it's likely to arrive. And Will just looks at him. And Fox Super says, yes, humans are foolish, but humans can overcome their own foolishness. But meanwhile, Kura says, something's coming in, real quick. Hi, man, how you doing? It's the Ardai gun. Ada, is that you? It's like, yeah, I'm not even going to have the helmet on, because... Like, we already knew it was me. The green-haired girl figured it out. We, we got it. Like, we know it's me. But she's still going to carry out her duty as the pilot of the Ardai gun. But that does mostly mean that she's on our side for now.
and just in case you couldn't figure it out from regular Dan Cougar having a big bird backpack and this Dan Cougar not but having a friend who turns into a big bird and the fact that she only learns four spells much like everybody in the back of every robot like every sub pilot can only learn four something weird's gonna happen unfortunately she can't get to an enemy in your friends. Yeah, Dan Cougar gets a one person to bed right away, so Dan Cougar over and get a one person to bed right Yeah, it's messed up, but they're gonna manage it. The idea of destroying anything non-organic hurts in your science hole. I mean... That's what gets you, that's what gets you. People's cotton shirts? Fine. Woolly jumpers? Fine. That big metal tube you live in? Say goodbye, motherfucker. By non-organic, they're going by the definition of you are either organic or mechanic. It's pretty much how science fiction does it. If you have ever, like, if you've managed to avoid that, then I don't know. You need to maybe. <laughs> Is an organic metallic compound dead? They don't. They don't kill it, they destroy it. It doesn't matter if it's living or dead. They destroy it, they turn it into its component atoms and say bye bye, fuck face. Gonna transcend this fucker. Oh, he gets two guns! Incredible. Nice transcend work the area. You go pink and get another big gun. Well, bugger, you say that you've got a real science hollow that means like butterfly turns everything into sand, literally. It reduces stock technology to silicon dioxide, regardless of what it actually made of. I mean, one, it's science fiction. Two, if you reduce a thing to its very smallest parts and then rebuild it again, you can you can do that. Like, that's a thing you can do. Let's go, Brasta. Let's Brasta. Let's really do it this time. 
が艦を退けるにはほど遠いその命もらったぞ不要なドタバタは好きじゃねえのさいやいつかナノマシンさんいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいつかいなぜだなぜ奴らはズール皇帝を恐れない死んでもらう Yeah, we should, yeah, the, the mono, like, the mono atomic edge is like, alright, okay, sure. I, alright, sure. You did it. It's really sharp, I get it. The lady in the, uh, Digon is Ada. Do a big move now on that lady. Okay, where's Toshia? Okay. Rose, you don't have to obey Zul to save Rui. It's not about my sister. Why can't you see that there are people who care about you? I left my home behind, along with my heart. It's one of the. One of the yeah, single action with Like the. Like a big thing in science fiction things is we have shot like this blade. Its edge goes down to being a single atom in width. That's really sharp. It's like, I mean, not really. But I get what you're trying to say. Must get over here, he's fucking miles away having a shit time. Because she's psychic and good. Yeah, one of the toy filament with a red ball on the end in Ring World. See where it was and not cut your top. That's good. Not enough science fiction thinks about the health and safety standards required for all this crazy technology. Mars to fight her, so I'm just gonna end her fucking turn. Because Mars is gonna take forever. Did you shoot the spinning blade to extend? No, he throws the blade and then he shoots it with the beam and it makes the beam diffuse into like a wide spray. And I mean, beam confuse. Like I've never really understood why he calls it the beam confuse.
He does it like one once in the show ever. Like he just throws it and then shoots it. Like being confused, I did it. It's gonna get crunchy for a second when I look up. Like being confused. Then Wade Twin. Is up here, I saw. The R Die Gun is meant to defend the Earth. Now that Vancouver Nova has fulfilled its purpose, I can fight with Johnny. Surely. Yeah, okay, so in the show, he does it to um, make the Kubelay's funnels fuck off. Less effective than a cohesive beam. I mean, if you want to shoot something in a big area, I would argue that it, it would in fact be more effective. Okay, then Mars versus this idiot. I'm here for one reason to destroy you, Mars. And then, internally, Takaru, thinking to himself. Rosé is fighting our hatred. If I respond in kind, I'll lose myself. No, the anger. The hatred in me is growing. Prepare yourself, Mars. This... This is for Marg! Shoot the beam across? That's not how, like, the beams work in Gundam. They are particle beams. Like the, like the beam sabers work that way because they hold the particles within a magnetic field. But when you fire from the beam rifle, it doesn't. It just shoots out a big beam of shit that you can't redirect. Like the science behind Minovsky particles is actually fucking solid and it's fucked up, but it's like it's accurate and solid and it all works. Like Minovsky particles are like one of the, like they're like the big standout thing where it's like. If you want to do hard science fiction right, Minovsky particles are like the textbook thing where you it's like they are very strongly defined what they do and it all actually is consistent and works and is scientifically accurate. It's just the bullshit that they exist. Well, Tsushima, you say if we're going to use logic, dying the humanoid robots are a terrible choice for combat vehicles in the first place. Most of the time, yes. But there is a reason to use them in space. Like it, like it would, like the best form would probably be a bowl you sit in, and then um, on extendable little arms you'd have lots of little thrusters for Vernier to move and like position really well. But then, like a bowl shape with little arms coming off of it, it's like okay, so now you've got a torso with arms and legs. But yeah, like humanoid things, it's no good. You don't do it. But for space maneuvering, pretty good actually, turns out. Can this man transam? God, he can't transam. Excellent. Yeah. 
いつもと勝手が違うが行くぜトランダムチャンスアンバーナーメスIt's like it turns out the humanoid shape is actually not very good for a lot of things. But we fucked it. We fucked all of it. Yeah, if it faces left, it's good. Although it's a definitely, you definitely got it. Yeah, it's not bad for venting heat. Like, I'm not saying there's nothing it's good at, but there's a lot of things it's actually quite shitty for. Hmm. Hmm. What's the bot? Who's our lowest level nerd? Oh, that guy already went. No. I guess Alleluia will give it a go. Yeah, go on then, Alleluia. You give it a go, buddy. Machine Cell's part of Nanomachine? Yeah, Machine Cell's are a special type of nano machine that do a very specific thing, but yeah, they are a pile of bullshit that is stupid and sucks. Wait, no support? Oh, because that dude's already fucking gone. Um. Okay, I don't think he can do seven unassisted. Um, so we'll scale. Thanks, Kathy. Good. You're in that. I could, yeah, let's do it with Crow then. Let's get this idiot out of the way. Uh, form of a plane. No, this is uh, this is the next mission. It's just. That that one you did it on the beach in uh, Atami, the the city, and here we're doing it in Dragon's Hive Island. Yeah, technically enzymes and nano machines and cell sword enzyme enzymatic machinery. Makes you think. <laughs> Gun doing set. They're all dog shape. There's uh, there's a really good. Um, one of my favourite bits in the standalone complex, the TV series for Ghost in the Shell, is there is a guy who he's a billionaire, he's got loads of money, and he is a direct counterpart to the Major, because the Major is a super sexy big titty lady, because she can choose to be, she can have whatever body she wants, so she chose that, for whatever reason. Um, but that dude, who, owned, like, who runs a company, He's basically a toaster with legs. Like, he's just a little square box with four legs and he walks around. And they're like, why... How fucking close he was. And they're like, why did, why did you choose that body? And he's like, why wouldn't I? Why would I want a human-shaped body? You bump into things. It's got lots going on. This one's pretty simple. It's easy to fix. It's got like six moving parts. I guess the area is gonna get it then. And he's like, and and they're like, but isn't it difficult to get around your big mansion? He's like, I don't have a big mansion. I'm like what? But you're a He's like, no, I just have a single room apartment. I'm like what? And he's like, and I only have that because sometimes you have to entertain people. But like. He gets TV shows and movies beamed directly into his brain, so he doesn't actually need like a TV in front of the camera lens to get it input into his brain. So he doesn't need a TV, but he's got one because other people like to see it. Like, as he looks around his apartment, there's pictures and paintings and different art pieces around that aren't actually there, but he's got them in his brain, like coded, like basically QR codes. He looks in the corner and it's like, oh, there's that AR project that's like fucking Pokemon Go, but... Mona fucking Lisa. 
and he's like, I don't need a big expensive bed, look, and he just, like, this is my bed, lays down, reverses into a little fucking cubby hole in the wall that fits him perfectly, he's like, and it charges me up, and pumps nutrient brew directly into my exhaust port to keep my brain alive, what more do I need? But here's Rosé's like, dang it, Ugh! but she won't give up, she's prepared to die to avenge Marg, and she owes him her life, and uh, Dacker's like, well, I'll fight if you're still willing. And Marin's like, dude, I don't think that's going to make Mark happy if you fight, duck, buddy. I'm like, but, and they both stop. And Shinobu's like, you fucking idiot. Mark wouldn't want you to fight, would he? And uh, they say that Takaru uh, himself said that his brother's fight was one of peace. And even after Zul took his heart, he remembered his love for his brother. Zul's the one that made the brothers fight and made Mark die. Blame him. Rosé's like, how dare you speak ill of the Emperor? And it's like, lady, you don't believe it, we can tell you not. And she just goes, ugh, Mars, finish me off. And he just says, go away. What? I don't care where you go, just go before I change my mind. Mars. So Rose leaves and it was like, nice job, Takaru, we know how you felt about that. If Kira's like, we know how you felt about that woman, but don't like and what you felt from that woman. But really all she wanted was death. And what uh, frightens Takaru is that he was ready to kill her. But he didn't. He stopped himself and broke the cycle of revenge. And that's what really counts. Nice work, kid. And then Crow's like, hope you don't regret it. But was like, wow dude, way to ruin the fucking moment. Just chill out. Like, well, it's not up to me, we we'll have to see if she comes back to get him. But, more incoming. And they came from the fucking moon, again. But, Dragon's Hive surrounded, these fuckers start shooting it. And then, uh, Norio Akamoto's voice, who's got a really good voice, we'll hear him when hopefully soon, but he just says, uh, Earth will! Can you hear me? Earth will! What the? But... Earth will? What's he fucking talking about? Earth will! Um, there's still time. Do as I say. Moon will? My apologies, but I will never erase this planet's life. This world has potential. Very well. Then I will raise you and execute in your place. Farewell, Earth will! Y you... Won't get away with that. It's fine. No, I can not making some noises because he's a fucking incredible voice actor. He's like 150 million years old now. Here's in Galactic Heroes. And it's the fucking quietest video of all time? Fuck off. I also want people to be able to hear his beautiful voice. I think we'll probably fight an enemy who does it soon. Anyway, but... Oh no, all these videos are too quiet. Fuck it. Anyway. Team D! die for the base but they're not gonna make it through the shooting and the moon robots are trying to kill our ass and it sucks and uh, Team D are heavily damaged but they're not gonna back down so Fog Sweeper with very good owie did the moon just talk Scott have been one it's fucked up right but Fog Sweeper you're alive we're here too you know fucking Tanaka you think a little thing like this would kill us I didn't think this would be enough to rattle you now stand, Dankuganova, and our ah, Daigon. And then, Shinobu, show us your power. Dankuganova, our ah, Daigon. The time has come. Transcendence mode, activate. Uh, what? Keyword M A X G O 
Ready. Danguga Maxgoto. N C T literally in English. Keyword M A X G O D. Danguga Max God. Max God. At this point, I'll take anything. Ada, right. Yet the arrows in. Let's go wild. Peaceful combination. That Kuka Max got a maximum fucking Obari. Peaceful combination. Because they do gravity. They do super heavy combination. The R Daigon combined with Dankuga Nova? You didn't know either, Ada? No time for chit chat. We got enemies coming. We got <laughs> we got it, Senpai! Fuck it, Senpai. Max God, our new strength. If this moon will or anyone else comes at us, we're gonna go wild. And then they're gonna. But I don't think these dudes speak with Wakamoto. Yeah. There is one. There are ones that do, but I don't think these ones do. But that cool, that guy can. He got some new moves. Yeah, even the big sword. This is Max God. Packs even more power than the God Beast mode. And it's faster than the I Die Gun. Speed beyond the hard eye gun. This is the true Dankuga. Shin, Shin Dankuga. Shut the fuck up, Johnny! <laughs> you, you can't join in with this Shin Geta bullshit. And it's our job to use it to its full potential. Good. We'll make it live up to its name. Max God, the five us will unleash your power. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's Kiai. It's Kiai, which is what you yell like. It's a, it's like. PNG and I yell, like NGL. You yell to get pumped up, it focuses your cheer, makes you cool as hell, makes you rowdy. The noises you make when you do um, curry, like when you go SHOP and stuff, um, are technically key eyes as well. Yeah, only certain people get to yell. Not everybody can hoot and holler in the way to get fired up. But this is the new final cannon move. Just fucking fly right up into their face and then rocket jump off of them. What else does the dude in the like the billionaire this man in the thing have? Like he's just like he's actually pretty much just a cube dog, and he's good as a and and they make him look like but. And someone, was, someone mentions like, didn't you have like cleaners and maids in your house and cooks that you made redundant? He's like, yeah, but all the money I save on like living in pretty much an empty room with a cardboard box in it to sleep in, I just still pay them, and it's fine. Like I, I, I'm making more money than ever before. No, it's because Johnny sucks. He's got the worst aim. He's too busy reading his men's magazines. Ghost in the Shell also has a scene where a man who is completely unmodified and is a regular human being man, um, he's hungry, but he can't leave the steak out. So um, one of the guys is like, here, eat my food. He's like, isn't that cyborg food? And he's like, yeah, just eat it. And he bites into it and it's fucking gross and it makes him throw up. He's like, oh my god, it's disgusting. He says, how do you eat this? And the and the cyborg guy goes, well, it's got all the nutrients I need for my stuff to work and to stop me rejecting my implants. And also, my brain box is programmed to tell me that it's actually really delicious. Like, it, every time I eat it, it's the best food I've ever eaten. Yeah, like Kira says, to add on top of that, he grows organs for people that want to stay as full bio people. Meat peeps. As I'll call them. He's just like, being biological sucks, just be a little metal box. Why would you want to be anything else? 
and like he and he, and people are like, aren't you worried that people will, like pick you up and kidnap you? And he's like, no, I can electrocute them. Or if I'm in my factory, I could like weigh myself down to the floor with magnets. Don't worry about it. There's not a person in the world strong enough to lift me up off the floor. He's so good. I love that dude, and he talks with like a super country Republican accent, cowboy y'all. He's good. He's really good. I love that weird little dude. So guys, I think I prefer your original state where Johnny can afford to me. He loves Nintendo's propriety avatar system. I want to get to Moon Oil! Moon was voiced by Wakamoto. Wakamoto is a dude who can roll his fucking ends. Do you have any idea how hard it is to roll an N? I want the end scene of the Umibozo from one another. Okay, I want the actual thing with that dude who shows up and is like, oh no. Woman, what are you afraid of? And she's like, oh, um, um. And some idiot told him to say something stupid. And like, oh, I fear nothing, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, well, if you're lying, he fucking knows, then you actually experience your worst fear. And her worst fear is like losing her figure and getting pregnant and having a fucked up baby. So she instantly gets pregnant and a big fucked up weird fish baby. Oh, nah. I, I can't do it. I'm not. Like I'm older. I'm not an incredible man. Did he just leave his blades in the previous state? No. He got him back. If he got more, then he obviously didn't leave him in, did he? Your eyes don't deceive you, it couldn't possibly be that they just left him in there for the animation. Why did... how many of these guys don't want to talk about Max God or anything? He just went Trans Am and picked them all up really quick. He's like, don't worry, I need, I'll get these back, don't worry, I got them. Trans Am is the stupidest shit as well. They needed to get a reference to the Red Ones Go Faster thing that Gundam does. And they also really wanted a way to, way to sell like more modern model kits, so they went, what if? Every robot also has a version where it's completely pink. Brilliant. Perfect. We can sell two of everything. One normal version and one pink version. Perfect. And I mean... Look where that ended up. Didn't work. Didn't work. We got fucking sick of it, it turns out. And I say when they needed a reference to the Red Ones Go Faster thing that Gundam does, they they didn't need it. They felt they did, because... you got to reference the original Gundam as much as possible to make the nerds like it. Yeah, change the paint on this model, said it would double the price. These, it, it, the, the fucked up thing about that is a lot of them were that. Like, they when they did the big kits, they only did, um... Like, Setsuna's one in big kit. They didn't bother with the rest, um, but for his one, they did sell it like it was uh, internet web shop exclusive for the pink one. So it was basically a forty percent markup for if you wanted the pink one. I mean, the pink ones are pretty cool, but also can't kind of fit. Yeah, Tierra's fat boy mode doesn't just get like it's like oh, it, does the 
the reactor outputs three times as much. Yeah, that's it. And then you sort of wobbles around going. I might purge him and see if his little boy mode has a transam. But his little boy mode sucks. And he's bad at it. Because he is a character who relies entirely on having a really strong force field. And then suddenly he doesn't. Mystic Moon Man. Camille is my favorite magic baby from space. The soul of the Zeta. I feel it running from the machine. Fuck it, man, is that dude? <laughs> New time level 5! Upgrading that boy! Uh oh! Uh oh! Uh oh! Hallelujah's getting a headache! What's up, Hallelujah? A headache, don't worry about it. Buh? Tierra recognizes that those machines are emitting uh, GM particles, and uh, they must be the UNF's new mobile suits. And here's Andre. No, Sergei and Somei, son's on Uh Sergei and Somei, they're like, oh, we must have found the Celestial Beings base. And Sergei's like, now's not the time. These soldiers are of Zexis, the Special Aid Forces of the World Peacekeeping Council. They are our comrades. It's like, Roger, all right, I got it. Soma Pires. And Quattro and Amro are here. Like, Quattro's like, the pressure from those mobile suits. And like, is, is it Saikomu? But... I'll take whatever help they can get on this one. It's like it's Sergei Smirnov. Yeah, he's Smirnov because he's Russian. Uh, Sergei Smirnov, the guy from that thing. Mr. Simuragi, he's like, yeah, let him work for it. I don't care. Fuck it. I'm drunk. And it's the GNX pronounced Jinx. But let's go with Perez. It's like, wow, they're in mobile suits. Are they Gundam? Are they Gundam? And the Camille doesn't nail, like, the air you breathe is wasted on you, clown, anymore. He, he just yells about the power of life. But here's um, Salma Perez in the Jinx. And there's Sergei. Sergei Smirnov, yeah. Dang, I have to look at that shit on Steam's memory because I can get it later. I want to touch it. Koitsume! You! Shithead! And then, through the power of not getting on with each other, they punch each other in the face and get the power of two punch. Incredible. Yeah, looking right, but we control them. It's because they're not technically part of our forces. They're just on our side. For now. There's also, um, there's a robot in Double O, which we'll probably see. Actually, have we already seen it? Is this one Tron in, in Season 1 or 2? I think it's in Season 1, right? Yeah, it's a shit robot. Oh, no, no, it's, it's not. It's in se Season 2. It's in Season 2. There's a robot called the Smoltron, which is, like, wild strawberries. It, Swedish. It's because it looks like a big fucking strawberry. Uh, 
And Apollo punched that fuck up. <laughs> Go back home. To the moon. And then he did. He sent them packing. Yeah. Transhumanism is good, actually. Also, both of those dudes are going, you, but in a rude way, but in differently rude ways. But they are saying the exact same thing. He says a Kono and he says Kutsu, mate. Kutsu is like what you say to someone below you, and Kono is what you say when you really hate somebody. Well, not even then, like it's. Like Kono can just be like regular you as well, but he obviously says it with Venom. Japanese, it's a wild fucking ride. Don't do it, in my opinion. Just learned her owls. Excellent. <laughs> I don't know, because they want to blow up the shit on Earth, so if you send them back to the moon, they actually hate that. Uh, <laughs> Baby, look at him. There's something about Baldios when he does the rocket jump animation, which is like way flying away. That that's too comedic for what happens in Baldios, where everything gets fucked up and uh, like Earth cannot sustain life. You don't need to thunder flash that dude. Yeah, that guy sees full health. And then come over here. Okay, I've got two turns left to mess him up. Yeah, that's a lot of juice, but it's good. Yeah, if you punch him into the moon hard enough, then they ain't coming back. They're done. Oh god. The beautiful Turrican. And the cool, calm, collected. Love that dude. Give him the big Sigma. He's like an M but sideways. Oh, he didn't kill him, but he made him upset. Beautiful boy's gonna have a fully upgraded robot. That he'll then have to re earn later, but that's fine. That means Amaro's probably nearly 5 too, right? Oh, he is 5! Okay, yes, yeah, so well, I should have upgraded him as well then. They both have special abilities when they're fully upgraded that only work when you're on your type level 5. Yeah, 
yeah, I really want Neo. I really want Neo, but I've got like two games that I already bought and haven't played in Last Guardian and Final Fantasy XV. So, and I got um, Pit People as well to do with Panor. So, I got a lot, of, a lot of things on the list that I can wait for that to be on sale before I get into it. Fin Funnel. Fin Funnel. Give him the bazooka and the funnel, dude. There it is. Go, Fin Funnel. Yeah, we're gonna do it. He got me a, a code for it uh, yesterday or the day before, I think. And we're gonna do some blood bowl on Saturday, Saturday evening time. Apparently, is the pie and also. So, you heard it here first. <laughs> Fucking love Amuro, he's good. He's good, and he's got issues. Turn offline for the other? Never. I'm always online. Online and feeling fine. Mm -hmm. Right, Crow, you can definitely murder that dude. Yeah, time to drop all the time base, I just fit the room. Move shit around on the grid. That's it. The only thing that they got in common. Right in the loon dick. Ready? Go! Go! Get him, bro. Tell him, give him the ammo. Yeah, I picked up Final Fantasy XV when it was went on sale for Christmas. Well, just after Christmas, actually. It was like, ooh, January sale, so I picked that up. And I just haven't done it yet. Neo, I, I don't know if it's Samurai era. It's got Samurai in it. A <laughs> little fast crazy we already narrate G Gundam. Gundam fight. Oh! I'll become the undefeated. I'm currently undefeated of the East, but I'll become the undefeated of the North, West, South, and Center. I'll become Super Asia. Look at this fucking Joker. This is. Oh, this is it. What the hell did that do? Bit. Yeah. Um. Somebody. Ugh, I don't like this at all. Uh. Let's find what Sergey says. GNX, the Jinx. It's a finer machine than I could have imagined. If the elites of all nations could use this mech, we may find world peace yet. With Exus and Celestial Being, behold our power and burn it into your minds. Alright, Sergei, okay, calm down. Uh, I saw a, a post where someone said uh, they wish they'd been recording because there is a scene... Oh, look, they did another move. Where um, that guy was like, I'm not a samurai. I'm not into it. I don't want to be a samurai. And then they said the outfit they were wearing was the most 
the samurai outfit of all time. Like, he could not have been cosplaying a samurai, like, harder. It's also made by Team Ninja, so... Those dudes are all weird anyway. I'm pretty sure Neo's Team Ninja, right? Or at least the people who were on Team Ninja. Yeah, yeah, it's by Team Ninja. Yeah, White Man says, if I a real white man who went to Japan and became a cool man, then fought demons. While we're on the subject, vaguely, of Japanese people hating themselves, the the two explicit Japanese characters in the original Gundam were on purpose um, short and ugly and didn't have their eyes coloured in. No, Hayato had his eyes coloured in, but Mirai didn't. But they want him to be all short and ugly and gross and bad. And Amaro's name is Amaro Ray, and they were like, "We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, like, the studio are gonna come round and they're gonna want the main character to be Japanese. What do we do?" And they went, "What if we spell his surname instead of R A Y, R E I?" Huh? And they were like, "All right, we'll hold that in the bag." If, if they come in and check it, we'll say that's how it's spelled and then it'll be Japanese, it's alright. And then nobody fucking came around the studio and like, Phew, glad we didn't have to pull that one out and change him from being American or whatever. Actually, I think he's Canadian. Um, change him from that to make him Japanese for no reason because the studio were like, The main character's gotta be Japanese or else. <laughs> They, they were just like, fuck it, we want to do our own shit, we don't want to deal with their garbage trash, don't want to deal with their commandments from the suits. So, if they come in we'll say his name's spelt that way, because it makes it more Japanese. But otherwise, it's stupid. And they did, and he's alright. And I'm still mad that I didn't figure out that... Wait, I knew that Shah Aznavour was Charles Aznavour. But I didn't fucking get that he's Amro Ray and Charles as in Ray and Charles and he's Ray Charles and then in fucking Zayda the follow up he wears fucking sunglasses. That's it, Crow. You got him, and then you just learn brave, which is like love, but. Not as good. In my opinion, personally, I prefer love to brave. But that's just me. I don't want to look at that dude. You've only seen one of these dudes do an attack that isn't the Hell Stinger. I don't want to look at the fucking Hell Stinger ever again. I remember the first run of this game, like, they were actually fucking deadly.
Yeah, Polnareff shows up. What the? JP Polnareff is Jean Pierre Polnareff. French as hell, you seen him? I never seen a more French dude than that dude. He's a jerk, and he sucks, and he hates dogs sometimes. Classic, classic French. I've been told that the um, like I know the the English stereotype of French people is that they smell of onions. Obviously, classic, very mature. But um, I've been told that the French stereotype of English people all them times ago was that they um, they think England smells like wet dog. And I mean, if you're going to try insulting people, maybe like try and be mean instead of being nice to them. Just uh. I do like them apples, France. Pony ref is really good. Pony ref is really good, and he's got a tiny dick. I can't wait for you to see it all and see his tiny dick. Maybe we should think of the French jokes as everyone. I think they're like, it's fucked up, but I think most countries think everybody else sucks. Yeah, personally, I hate it. We watched um, two JoJo episodes today with uh, from part four. Yeah, part four with Harvest. Harvest. Oh. Nobody hates the Belgians. No. Nobody cares about the Belgians enough to hate them. That's the trick. What's, what's Belgium ever done? Oh, in, like mayonnaise with your frites? Sure, fine. See, so you said exactly the same. Because no one cares about Belgium. <laughs> he got way more jacks in London than Paris once wants in Paris. You can see a gun with guy with already traffic and try and fight an ambulance driver who honked at him. Yeah. 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 To both parts of that, just yeah. There are jerks in London. And crazy people in France. Fucking, I still... Fucking Paris Syndrome. Paris Syndrome. Paris Syndrome. Bel Belgium equals Tintin. Belgium actually is uh, a diverse uh, array of people. With many different ideas and values and cultures. They are not all detectives of various ages. Anyways, the anime goes good. Dan Kuga Nova's big. Potion game is John Kovadon. Have you seen the movie? JCVD? It's, uh, that's an alright movie, apart from the bit where it goes, hey, you know how that whole movie has been about this one thing? We're now gonna have a scene where John claude Van Damme literally rises into the ceiling on a chair and explains that to you. I'm Roland Valor, he's got the hot blood. Cool Belgians detectives. But Belgian waffles? Alright. Mayonnaise with frites? Real good. Belgian chocolate. Sorry, that comes under the the chocolate rule for Ethan. It sucks. You tell him, Bobby, that you're gonna bust through your big old motion wave gun. At what stage you on? Forty. Two. 
two. I fired. You know what? Oddly enough, I have not ever fired a Tanegashi with a musket. Surprising. I know. Jenny from stand there. Don't what's even the fucking point. No, this is the first stage for today. Thank you, thank you. Like it. Team D, Sanjo. Nantene. Team D, let's go. Oh, sorry, guys. Where did you even get that lightning from? Oh, there's the Abari. Oh, British people do fire muskets. Oh, commoners fire muskets all day, but they don't fire fire Tanagashi or Japanese muskets. That'd be ridiculous. You fire good old British muskets. But not me, I'm not a commoner, obviously. I love the tea cow that And they don't explain that for a really long fucking time. Like I don't think they even cover that until Z3. Like they cover why that's in there. <laughs> Ada's like Johnny's like, are you alright? I just like, yeah, yeah, I'm, it's okay, Johnny, you're here. And then I was like, yes, yes. I get it. We all get it. The tea kettle scream comes in in the show because it turns out Aoi, when she was a child, was real scared in a room one time. And when she then does the big move from unlocking the horrors of her past and overcoming them of being a child scared in a room. Um, when she then does the attack, there's then a little girl version of her screaming at the same time. And it's that tea kettle scream. And then they just have it in the attack all the time in the game. It's just like, eh. it's like holy shit, lady. Chill out. Yeah, poor rest of Dan Kuganova team. They all got a fuck Sakuya. I don't think they even have to do that. I think Dan Kuganova would just go, his new people already don't got a fuck. It's fine. None of you have to touch Sakuya's gross hobo dick. And there's Brave, which casts Accelerate, Val, Invincible, Aim, Yell, and Fury. And whereas Love casts Alert, Strike, or well, Aim still, Alert, um, Valor, Accelerate, Yell, and... I don't know if it does Fury or not, but it does um, Double Money and Double Experience. <laughs> you think that because it's better than Red Snow? Well, I mean, no offence taken. And Crow spends 10 more years getting that guy. But then he gets the guy. Let's get this new. new. Yeah, okay, so no fury, but it does do the doublers. That fucking seam, every time. Like, I actually noticed that the seam isn't even central. I think it's like two, three pixels over from being central because it doesn't go straight through the middle of the gem on the forehead. It's slightly off to the side. So I don't know what that, why that's there other than to irritate me. Oh, Terado, and that dude, he's gonna play this game one day and he'll play it too high res and I fucking hate him. 
But he came around, that's why he keeps making all the race car moves. He realised that being a race car is good. Nah, this dude's out of juice. But, oh no, he's out of juice. I thought he might have the refill, but he don't got the refill. If everybody got in the car, you can make it to the car, get in the car. Being in a race car so good, why is that in you know, a row now? Because it's a race, because it goes as fast as a race car. Um, I mean, I don't really want to touch these guys, but I will. So it, she's one of celestial being soldiers is reacting to my brainwaves. Who is he? Why does my chest hurt? I, I mean, plenty of medical reasons. Who it is? Race, race cars are worse at killing people, worse at defending the earth, and worse at being an arc for humanity. I guess. You ever see? You ever seen a fucking NASCAR? Put together a goddamn super baby, so humanity can survive should the Earth be destroyed. I doubt it. We need something iron. Blob Mars. Oh yeah, this idiot. What about this guy down here? <gasps> what a good time we've had. I love to have a giggle, me. But, if I get serious for a moment, who else thinks it's bullshit that we haven't made a mortal dog yet? Why haven't we made a dog that can only die if it wants to, but it does have to go through like a three form check? Where it's like, do you really want to? Yeah, alright. Are you sure? Yeah, alright. But, you're a good boy. Yeah, I am. Well, are you sure you want to die if you're a good boy? No, I don't. Alright then. Oh, carry on. Just saying, it'd be nice if dogs could live forever. If they wanted to. But if dog is infinite, how do you pop? I mean, I guess we just end up with a lot of dogs in the end. But that's fine too. Shield gun. Outrageous. No, you can't eat the excess dogs. That's a. That's why they're meant to live forever, so nobody has to be sad because their dog goes away. You lunatic. Dog also have a pup mode that can be activated when they want. Yeah! Why not? The dog can become pup whenever it desire.
Bing. And people have to be sad because they can no longer eat long. Well, I mean, cultures with that's acceptable. I guess they could carry on with that. That's fine. Your favorite dog breed is a cold weathery, but you hate the cold and hate being cold. That's fine. In this world of ideal infinite dog, you can either be made to enjoy the cold, or the dog could just be happy. So, we did it, we got him, we got the SR point, nice work everybody. It took a long while because those things are too much older than they're big and I hate them. But we did it. But we know that the moon machines and dragon hives are connected somehow, and what was that deal with moon wheel, talking to earth wheel? Don't get that. But uh, Sergei is like, alright, I'm done it, see you exes, sayonara. And uh, see you later, let's go, Soma, well, let's go, Perez. And Ali was like, Soma Perez, why can't I get that woman out of my mind? And Thierry's like, speaking of things that I love too much and can't get out of my mind, what's up with uh, their solar furnace mix, hmm? But, let's go get some answers from a Frog Sweeper. So, what's the deal, buddy? And uh, it's like, come on, you gotta tell us, Needles. Okay, the time has come to answer. But first, there's someone you'd like us to meet. It's Vladimir! And he introduces her as an ally. And uh, Ada says that she's the one who gave her the Ardaigon and her orders. And uh, Tanaka is like, uh, oh, uh, yeah, and uh, we used to be married. <laughs> and, um, and, like, wait, wait, that's no, this, the second thing. The, the. Yeah, and it's like, Oswald's like, but Someone else had a noise. like, ah, ah, it's not that unbelievable, is it? It's like, anyway, about the. the the Ardaigon thing. Um, and she says uh, she only built the Ardaigon as her sponsor ordered it and had it work uh, with the Trinities at said sponsor's request. And it's like, so you know who was behind the Trinities? He's like, yeah, Laguna Harvey, chairman of the Linear Train Corporation. Well, he was the chairman and he was behind the Trinities, but now he's goddamn dead as hell. Um, Vladimir tells uh, Zexist that he was assassinated at the behest of the Trinity's true master, but she didn't care to find out who that was. All she ever needed from Harvey was his money and his intel. And Thierry is like, but you did work with the Trinities, didn't you? And then he was like, yes, I did, and I accept full and total responsibility for Ada's actions. And then Lockon's like, now, now, Thierry, the Ardaigon is none of our business. He go, but it goes together with, uh, if it goes together with Dan Kuganova, why? Why are they designed to be more than some of their parts? Is it the enemy? And is the enemy Moon Will? So I was either green when she was in the Red Danguga. Was she green? She had that stupid helmet on. If you mean just like her light color when they did the big move was different, Look, buddy. The fucking guys in Voltron are all in the wrong outfit. Actually, the guys in Voltron are right, but in the original they're all in the fucking. He wears a black suit and he's in the red dog. Fuck off. But Fox Super says the answers will come from someone else. Uh, someone snatched the Cyber Beast Force from their red universe, developed Dan Kuganova and the Ardaigon from their tech, and handed the plans to Fog Sweeper and Vladimir. And that was another will. Earth will. And they're like, wait, 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 so that guy brought us here? And it's like, yep, series of fortunate coincidences. Nice work, guys. And here's Will. He was the computer system of Dragon's Hive, as we met him. And uh, But that's not entirely wrong. He's actually a, a sentient machine intelligence, and he looks like a big rip dude, and he's fucking an Adonis. But he's a being of pure mind, which merely inhabits the machine. And this is what he calls his true form, and it's projected to us through his limited dimensional powers. He's the one who hacked Vader, of course, but now it's locked up so tight that even he can't get at it. Uh, Will says that he was previously captured by the super-dimensional being Muge Zalbados, and once the Cyber Beast Force defeated Muge, he was free. Uh, he did warp them from that dimension, but it was beyond his powers to choose where they would go. There were many others of his kind in other parallel universes, but that's another story for another time, don't worry about that. Um, in a planet far from Earth, in another plane of existence, and far in the distant past, a uh, battle took place between two civilizations. Uh, the battle destroyed both, as well as their entire star system, countless other civilizations, and ultimately space itself. And, uh... 
Kimba was like, wow, complete dimensional collapse. Yeah, we know all about that. Don't worry about that. We are Hamazuta. But uh, the intelligences that survive appointed themselves guardians of the universe and left their ruined dimension to spread across all existences. And Will was one of those. And Muge Zobardos, another entity with power over dimensions, uh, captured him, hoping to learn of, you know, his home universe. And like, uh, guardian of the universe? Uh, He-Man or whatever? What's that about? And uh, he says that it's the nature of organisms to try and survive, regardless of the fate of other creatures. And if this becomes a threat to the universe when those instincts are armed with weaponry. So, uh, the wills exist to prevent this from happening. They protect worlds as they are born, as they evolve, and finally, as they go extinct. <laughs> if Computer Man is more powerful than Vader with the air, maybe, maybe. But, um, it was this world that found his way to Earth, and he found creatures who could reproduce rapidly, try to uh, rein in energy beyond their ken, and above all, war. Their war will reach out into outer space, inevitably. Uh, and, but, that does, and Squadron's like, so that means you want us extinct? He's like, no, I don't want a human extinct. He believes in us, or rather he's come to believe us, in fact. And uh, he says that our boy Takaru, in fact, uh, is one of the reasons he's changed his mind. A man from another world who learns the meaning of love, enough to forget his hatred and forgive. And he says that is what will bring harmony to the universe. Uh, and then Nova and Daigon come in, and uh, that was a chance given by Will for humanity to fight against its own extinction. When he first came, he felt the danger of humanity, but also a glimmer of hope in Dan Cougar. And that machine uh, struck down Muge Zobardas. And that's when he met Fog Sweeper. And they struck a wager over whether or not humans could draw out the power of Dan Cougar. The wild power, the energy, the power of the base instinct to survive. If they couldn't, Dan Cougar couldn't, it would carry out his duty as an arc. And preserve the life of Earth through its destruction. If they could, then it would carry out his duty as a sword to protect the Earth from destruction. And uh, then someone's like, Okay, you've told us a lot of shit, but protect Earth from what? And humanity from what? And he says, okay, well, there's another will on Earth. Well, it, it, the moon. Moon will. And uh, that was another one that was once held captive by Muge Zobardos. And like him, moon will chose to give humanity a chance. But he has run out of patience and decided enough is enough. And because of the Imperium. And humans have again arrogantly tried to seize power beyond their own ability. And it crushed the other will's hope. So he's sending his forces, uh, the white robots from the moon, to end humanity. Yeah, moon, Noriakamoto. I fucking love Noriakamoto. He's good. But... Fox Sweeper won the bet with our will. Humans have drawn out Dan Cougar's full power, and now is their chance to fight for their survival. And then Fox Sweeper says, That's it! That's the whole truth! And uh, for Team D, it basically boils down to humanity is up uh, to a trial, and they got to take it on. And they're like, Hell yeah, let's go to the fucking moon and beat that shit head up. So they're like, It's probably going to be an awful moon, but it'll be worth it to keep uh, hell from reaching Earth. Uh, no worries, because worries just suppress the wild instincts that they'll need, so it's, don't worry about it, nothing ever. And uh, they brushed them aside long ago. And then... Where's fucking Jeffrey? Give me Jeffrey. Don't we have the bestial blood? But yeah, they're gonna go beat up Moonwell. <laughs> Let's go, everybody! Good day! But yeah, Jeffrey and Sumeragi um, agree, and everyone get ready, because we're going to space in 12 hours, so set your alarm clocks. But just one thing about that, the owner of uh, the SMS, uh, Mr. Richard Berla, has uh, sent over space combat equipment for the VF-25s, the Macro Space Boys planes. It must be the new Super Packs, and they've been waiting for them, and Alto's like, hell yeah, I can handle it. Super Pack. Osman's fucking like, holy shit, the Super and uh, that's the humanity that uh, everyone in Dragon's Hive has faith in. That Alto believes he can do a thing. Nice work. Humans believe in things. We did it. That was there's a lot of words for that shit. <laughs> it's, really, it's actually less nonsensical than the end of Mass Effect. <laughs> Fucked up, right? Fucked up. I want to find a picture of um, Earthwill's true form. Because he's fucking ripped, if I remember right. He looks like um, the guy. This is the one I want. I've got the safe state anyway. Earthwill Dan Cougar. He looks like the dude from Third Strike. Street Fighter Third Strike. He's just a really ripped dude. It's like Urien. Just so keep going, Dan Cougar. 
god, Dora. No, show me your earth will. These big bloody tears. He's good 